Hello, hello, good evening and welcome back. Um, so here we are once again, once more um, for another night. Um, welcome, Emma, for you. And uh, well, hopefully we're going to get more of, you know, the class joining pretty soon. Um, for this evening, well, we actually are going to be covering some crucial things, something that has to do with, well, intonation or pronunciation that we're going to be needing when, whenever we need to ask um, questions of choice. I think we or you guys have already covered or learned how to use questions of choice, but tonight we're going to be going um, specifically into the pronunciation when we're going to be using this kind of question. So that's part of what we have. We also have to work on, well, rather and or will rather and will prefer, which are very, very similar in the way they're going to be used, but they also have a tiny difference that is important for us to be able to recognize or for us to actually get to know. Um, so we have that and um, Apart from talking about well, rather, we also have some um, extra practice of the pronunciation of the topic when we were um, subtracting some of the sounds from from the auxiliary verbs. I don't know if at this time you guys are having storms or rain falling uh, where you live. Hopefully you're not going to have any issues with the signal or any problems with, um, you know, like the participation we're going to be uh, carrying away during the class. But if it's the case, it's totally understandable if you are facing that. If uh, there's rain falling at your places, then that's totally understandable. All right, and another one, another part that we have to cover is a conversation. The conversation, conversation we're going to be talking about tonight is titled, maybe I should try that. And uh, I consider this to be very, very interesting because there's one thing that actually I never thought of um, that strategy for learning or for remembering um, new vocabulary. So that can be helpful, very, very helpful, I consider. But we're going to talk about that later when we get to, um, to that specific um, conversation. In the meantime, well, we're going to start with you two guys. And that means we can have as much time as we want to share our ideas on the question for this evening. And actually tonight, the question is kind of open, but at the same time can be a bit tricky to answer. Um, and the question itself is the following. And I'm, we're going to start this evening by, you know, the, the attendance or the, depending on, on how um, early you guys joined. So we're going to be going with Emma first, then Joel, and then we're going to get Beatriz. And the question is the following. What would you do if you had $1 million to spend in 24 hours? So only 24 hours, you will have $1 million. Um, so what would you do? I mean, what things would you get? Where would you go? Um, if you had one, if, and there is only one rule. You have to spend everything. Like you cannot keep any of the money. You have to spend it all. So what would you do? Emma, in your case, what will be your adventures, your wild ideas on what would you do if you had $1 million to do anything you want? Well, first, I will buy a house because I already see it, a house. And that house is to, let me think, $200,000. Right. And after that, I will pay a course of pilot, and it's around ten hundred dollars. All right. With the rest of the money, I will, I will pay. Well, I don't have bills, but I will ask for my family if they have some bills, and and I will pay them. And with the rest of the money without any other kind of thing that I can, I will have to pay. I will buy some things to create my own business, 
to improve my my abilities maybe in business activities and I will increase all my all the money. All right. Very good. Very good. Very good idea. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. All right. How about Joel? If you had one million dollars, Joel, what would you do with it? Uh, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, that's a crazy, a crazy question. Yes. I'm not sure. Maybe I would go crazy. But first, I would like to buy some houses to rent to rent later and keep earning money. Okay. But I'm not sure because, as the idiom say, what what is it come is it go. I don't know. Yes. Not sure what to do with a lot of money. But Phil, you know, that's a really good idea. Getting some houses to rent them after and you can continue getting some money from them. That's that's very clever. So, all right. So, yeah, getting some houses and then renting them so you can continue getting some money. Because, I mean, the rule is to spend it all in a day. So, if you buy many houses, of course, you're going to have, um, you know, you're going to easily spend a million dollars. Okay, so from Beatriz, tell me, Beatriz, what will be your ideas or your take on uh, how would you spend one million bucks if you if you had them? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, okay, I think I I buy a big house on the beach. All right. Uh, yes, and after that, I I buy a big apartment in New York uh, <laughs> and I buy a new car. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I, I buy many tickets, plan, um, boleto de avión. Oh, plane tickets? Plane tickets, uh, yes, and many clothes and shoes. <laughs> Okay. The only thing that I think will let you be will let you become poor will be getting getting or trying to get an apartment in New York because they are super expensive. Like one million dollars would not <laughs> will not be enough. Mm. Ni siquiera para rentarlo pueda que sea fácil en un apartamento en Nueva York. Pero el resto super reachable. But getting an apartment in New York. You will need more than a million dollars for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but apart from that, it's very cool. Very good ideas. All right. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever stopped and thought about the fact that there are many things here in our country that are even way more expensive than, than they are in more developed countries or countries that have more access to resources. Because, um, for example, if you talk to people who live in La Zona Rosa, the so uh, famously called Zona Rosa, I have heard that apartments there are very expensive. Like they cannot get up to um, half a million dollars. And well, some places in other countries like uh, with more access to resources, as I mentioned before, I have heard that they don't get up to that high, some of the prices or some of the apartments. I mean, they can be probably a quarter of a million or some a bit of a little bit more, but not as expensive as Zona Rosa. And taking into account that our country isn't really like that big of a of a business attraction. Um, but anyway, so that's what we have. You know, sometimes we want to spend like we live in other in another country, which we don't. But anyway, uh, Melissa, if you had that million dollars, Melissa. What would you do? Um, what will be the things you would like to do with a million bucks? Hi, teacher. Hey there. Um, I think that uh, first, 20, 25%, I would like invest on business. And the other 25%, I will buy a big house and my car. And the other 25%, I I would like to travel. Uh, and the last 25%, I would like to help another people. Okay, very good. Yeah, very good idea. You know, my dad has that, that idea as well. Um, I remember he, he used to tell this story when he was living in the US 
Um, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, but in the US, the lottery goes up to really high numbers. Like you can get up to $25 million or $250 million. I think that has been like the top $250 million. So um, he used to say that if, um, well, he used to get tickets sometimes. That's the first part. You know, if you never try it, you're never going to get it. But he, he says that he used to get tickets and he used to joke around uh, that if he ever got the price, like, uh, you know, getting at least $5 million, he will help the family. Like He will help the rest of the family. He will give them, you know, some money for them to pay off their houses, for them to get anything they need. And then with the rest of the money, that's when he will start doing his own thing. But yeah, I mean, sometimes it's good to help others when we have resources. Um, but yeah, well, that's just us daydreaming. You know, it's not something that um, is easy to get. If you will ask me, well, I actually have a really good idea of what I would do. And I have actually thought of this since I was like, like 17 or something. Um, I think we didn't talk about that. I, I don't remember if I mentioned this to you last night, but um, one of my favorite series in terms of like books is The Hunger Games. And uh, well, I have always dreamed of seeing a series, like an actual TV series that represents the the pure nature of the books like completely because the movies are amazing and I, I love the movies but i would like to have or if i ever had the access to one million dollars i would pay for that of course after i create or i pay for people to make the series i will get revenue from the series because that's how it works right i will get you know the earnings that the series will get because i will be um the one who actually paid for it But yeah, that's that's one of the things that I would like to do. Um, it's a bit of a um, self selfish kind of thing, but I consider that that's you know what I will want. Anyhow, so um, stop daydreaming and let's get down to what we're here for, and we're here to learn English. Um, so yes, for this evening, as I mentioned in the beginning of the class, the main topic would be will rather and will prefer. These two are very similar. We can use them interchangeably. However, there is a tiny difference um, with one of them that we're going to get to learn in a bit. Um, for now, let's do a little bit of an extra practice on this. Remember, I always like to reinforce the things that we have been learning before. And for this one, I have brought some new examples on how we are going to be Uh, well, subtracting so, or subtracting the well sections of the auxiliary verbs. Um, so I would like to have you guys just pronounce them once and then we're going to move on. This is just an easy, an, an easy and quick practice. It, it's not something that is going to take us a long time. Now, um, I would like to know if maybe Beatriz will be willing to do the first one. If we remember the... Um, the reduction of auxiliary verbs sounds or some of the letters when we are pronouncing them or using them like this. So Beatriz, will you mind doing the first one? The river banks be being polluted. Polluted, okay, very good. The river banks being polluted, great. All right, um, now how about Emma? Would you mind doing the second one? Many trees are being cut down. Many trees are being cut down. Very good. Um, Joel, would you be willing to do the third one? Okay. The ocean's being endangered. The ocean has been endangered. Amazing job. And Melissa, would you do the last one, please? Um, some animal spices have been eradicated. Okay, I think I hear I made a mistake in this one because it's only one R. But species, that's how we're going to pronounce species. this one. Species. species, yes, species. When we talk about the different um, subdivisions of animals or the different kinds of animals that are out there, we are going to use um, species. Now, for riverbank, uh, Beatriz, what will be your take on what is the meaning of riverbank in Spanish? ¿Cuál sería el significado de riverbank? or the, the understanding you have? 
lo acabo de buscar y entiendo que es la orilla del río. Uh -huh. sí, exactamente, sería la orilla, sería, eh, uy, se me fue el nombre en español, porque así tiene un nombre más, más específico, pero sí, sería la, lo que conocemos, ¿verdad? Comúnmente como la orilla del río. Así que yes, Red River Bank is like the edge of a river. Um, so very good, very good. And uh, uh, having done this, we are now going to move into this territory. And this is infinitive clauses and phrases. This has to do with the conversation we were dealing with last night. If you remember, the conversation included included a problematic situation where there was a company that was polluting a river and that was causing fish to die. And there were like many problems happening around that situation. So here <clears throat> we're going to see how we can use infinitive clauses at the beginning of a sentence and then some phrases um, to just complete the whole idea that we have. This is not something too complicated to learn. So I consider this is uh, better off if we just go ahead and take the dive and practice it um, right on. So the, the, the sentences sorry, are going to be as following. One thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. So here we have it. Um, when we do this in the beginning of the sentence, if we have an infinitive being used over here and here as well, we are doing it as lower. And that means that the actual meaning or what we want to, um, to transmit to the listeners of our expressions is going to be more meaningful. It's going to be more important because when we use infinitive forms of the verbs, that means that we're actually trying to express something that we care about. Sí, entonces cuando utilizamos la forma infinitiva, para que quede súper claro, eh, por lo general en este tipo de contexto, se va a escuchar mucho más serio. O sea, se va a notar que nosotros estamos, o sea, teniendo una conversación acerca de algo eh, que consideramos importante. No significa que el utilizar la forma del gerundio, que es la otra forma eh, común, ¿verdad? Que existe... En, en español eh, va a tener, o sea, un significado malo tal vez, pero sí el, como el énfasis que le vamos a dar utilizando las, las infinitive clases va a ser mucho más eh, serio, o sea, y va a tener como ese tono, ¿verdad? En el cual se trata de demostrar que sí nos importa. O sea, de verdad lo que estamos diciendo y no es una conversación necesariamente casual. Entonces, esa sería la diferencia que pueda existir o el motivo por el cual utilizar infinitive clauses de vez en cuando sea así de importante. Sí, entonces, si se fijan ustedes, o sea, en ambas partes de la oración tenemos, ¿verdad? Eh, la utilización de los infinitive clauses. Aquí están, o sea, en, la, en los dos lados. To, um, antes del verbo y de esa forma, o sea, se expresa la acción eh, casi que por separado y a la misma vez se da ese, ese tono, ¿verdad? De énfasis en la necesidad de poder realizar estas acciones porque es algo que consideramos nosotros importante. Si por ejemplo aquí dijera, um, another way of stopping them, o sea, puede que suene como algo um, a futuro. Sí, porque es el, el detalle, que sabemos que la forma del de ING en los verbos en muchas ocasiones tiene verdad ese tono que se utilizan para expresiones de futuro. Obviamente depende de la estructura completa alrededor de la oración, pero por eso sería que se podría llegar a entender de esa manera. Entonces, la mejor forma de hacerlo sería con infinitive clauses porque estos sí se refieren a un momento presente, algo que, o sea, en este momento yo considero importante. So that's why we're going to be using infinitive clauses when we're talking about something that we care, when we're explaining something that we consider to be really important. So one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. So that's, um, you know, having... As I mentioned before, two infinitive clauses in um, both sections of the, of, the, of the sentence. Another way to stop them is to get to, uh, to get a TV station to run a story on it. 
O to run a story, vamos a ponerle on it, porque así nomás no, no tiene sentido tampoco. So another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. So that's one of the other sections um, that is important. You know, if we want to stop a difficult situation or we want to punish somehow a um, company for what they're doing, well, we can get a TV station to run a story on the situation. And the last one is the best way to fight HIV AIDS are to do more research in and educate people. Here, the reason why we have the use of the verb R or the form R of the verb B is because we're going to provide two examples, not only one, but two of the best ways. And also because here we mention ways, which is a, a plural form. So um, that's why we're going to, um, to have R being used here. Now, I don't know if you have any questions about this, the use of infinity classes, because as I mentioned previously, uh, it's not something too tricky. It's just, um, you know, the, the fact that when you're explaining something that is important to you, it's better if you do it off this way and not necessarily using the gerund form of the verbs. Because always here, for example, um, you can you can replace this to fight with of fighting. The best ways of fighting HIV AIDS are, and once again, you know, you are going to have full meaning, but the actual uh, feeling of the sentence is not going to be the same. Um, so I don't know, any questions you guys may have about this? Okay, seems like no. So we're going to move on into the intonation in questions of choice, which is, well, the thing that I wanted to get to. All right, so you, I think you already know that there are many changes in intonation when it comes to pronouncing questions in English. And that is actually one of the most important things that we have to remember because in English, there is no accent as in Spanish. We don't have the, the sign that we know as tilde. So English doesn't have that. The only thing you have is the changes in the voice or the intonation changes you are going to use to put more stress in a specific section of the question or the sentence apart from others. So here, when we're providing questions of choice, these are simple questions of choice because here we only have two options. There's questions of choice where you have three or even four options that people can pick from. And in those ones is going to be like a kind of a roller coaster to some, but it's also kind of easy as well because all the options you have previous to the um, to the last one are going to be pronounced going upwards. So are going to be pronounced with a stronger level of voice. And the last one is the one that is going to be always going to be pronounced going downwards, like lowering the voice you're going to use. And how is this supposed to sound? Well, before I do the example, I would like to hear you guys and your take how you're going to do um, the pronunciation of the questions of choice. I would like to hear first, I think, well, Daniel, ya que va llegando, vamos a escuchar cómo pronunciamos, Daniel, esta primera eh, oración que tenemos acá. Lo que estamos tratando de hacer, ¿verdad? Será la diferenciación en la cual cambia la voz para poder dar eh, ese sentido de enfatizar que son dos opciones las que estamos facilitando. Entonces, ¿Cómo eh, podríamos pronunciar esas preguntas acá, Daniel? La primera, principalmente. Bueno, Buenas vamos noches. a probar, pues. Ok. Uh, ¿Esta cómo se pronuncia, teacher? Rather, rather. Rather, sí, rather. Ok. Would you rather take broadcasting or economics? There you go. Very good. Very good job. Yes. Branchy Would you rather take <laughs> broadcasting or economics? Ok, one thing, one little secret that, um, well, it's not a secret, one little thing that is um, crucial when we're talking about questions is that every time you have the yes, no questions, the ones that we know as yes, no questions, um, those are normally going to end in a lower voice. Here, this is sort of a yes, no question. It's not the same. I mean, it's not like you're going to answer it 
Yes, I would. I mean, it's not like that. But would is one of the things that normally guides us towards a yes, no question. So every time you find questions like this, it is very regular that the question is going to end with a lowering of the voice. And every time you have a double H question, um, the ones like what or who or any of those double H questions you can use, those are going to end in a um, inflection going up of your voice. So the inflection is not going to be going down, but going up. So the actual force of the question is going to be at the end of the conversation or of the specific sentence uh, and not uh, in the middle or in any other section. And it's not going to end up in a lowering of the voice. It's always going to end in a, um, well, elevation of your voice. So yes, that's how we are going to pronounce this. How would you rather, oh, sorry, <laughs> would you rather take broadcasting or economics? So you hear that there at the end of the, of the, of the question, we kind of bring the voice back in and we don't um, do it in such a strong way. Um, how about the second question? Um, how would you pronounce it, Melissa? Um, would you rather study fashion or hospitality? There you go. Very good. Would you rather study fashion or hospitality? Very good. Thank you very much. Um, Beatriz, how would you do the third one? Would you prefer to play the guitar or the violin? Very good. Would you prefer to play the guitar or the violin? And here we have a change, you know. And here's where we start to see the difference that exists between rather and prefer. As I mentioned previously, it's very tiny. It's not a big difference. And we're going to go deeper into that in just a minute. But before we move on, I would like to hear um, how would you pronounce the last question that we have here, Joel? Yes. Do you prefer to study in the day or at night? Okay, and that question, I actually want you guys to answer it as well. Um, so I'm going to start with Emma. So Emma, do you prefer to study in the day or at night? I prefer, prefer to, study, to study at night. Okay, very good, very good. How about you, Joel? Do you prefer to study in the day or at night? Most definitely during the day. But the in day? this case... Uh, you know, in the night because it's my only free time. Okay, good, very good. Um, how about Beatriz? Do you prefer to study in the day or at night? I prefer to study in at night. <laughs> in at night. <laughs> okay, very good. Ahí como a las cinco y media, cuando no es ni noche ni día. Um, how about Melissa? Do you prefer to study in the day or at night? I prefer... Um, in the day. In the day? Okay. Yeah. Less risk of falling asleep, maybe. Um, how about Daniel? Do you prefer to study in the day or at night? I prefer to study in the day, teacher. Okay, very good. Hasta el momento, ninguno de ustedes ha tenido el eh, curso de 9 a 10. Todos ustedes han estado siempre trabajando de 8 a 9. Me, teacher. You in have? The past. Yes, in... it was horrible. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why? I feel tired the, the, the following day, the next day. <laughs> okay. How about you, Daniel? En una ocasión yo estuve de 8 a 10. Oh, sí, cierto. Así me impartieron una vez, este, así, la, las clases. Pero uh -huh. sí, era matador, la verdad. <laughs> yo que siempre tengo que estar así, ya tengo como tres meses, de hecho, en esa forma de 8 a 10. Pero el resto, entonces, chicas, ustedes sí han estado siempre de 8 a 9, nada más. In my case, teacher, uh, when I study at the university, I receive class from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And mm -hmm. then 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. English class. And it was very tired, yes. Yeah, I can imagine. That will be very tiring. Today, you know, well, before, uh, Beatriz, what are you going to say? Uh, the sun. I'm um, Melissa. Melissa, creo que fue, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Tenía, uh -huh. I, I had my, my university class 
And after that, I, I have my English class very hard. Yeah, that will be very tiring. Today, you know, I don't know if you guys noticed, but at the beginning of the class, I was less active. I was I wasn't as 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 um as regular because it was a very tiring day. Uh, I didn't do much because I was basically with my computer the whole day, but I was translating some documents, and that's pretty rough. It was a, a kind of a hard a hard work, and uh, yeah. But if I was also to answer. Honestly, I prefer to teach at night. I don't know why, but I feel like it's it's easier. And the fact that it's not as hot as during the day, I think it's it's better. I mean, of course, if it's in an online environment. But if it was like in 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 regular classes, like face to face classes, I will always take uh, a day schedule because I don't think um, it's you know either safe, neither entertaining to um to have classes at night however it's always important that we remember that attitude has a lot to do with the things we do but still yeah it's it's pretty cool and um well i cannot say that it's it's horrible as joel said but for me it has been kind of tiring and i, I think i'm going to totally enjoy this coming week because with Corporativo, normally when we finish one uh, module, we start the next one right after or like right the next week. Or sometimes we only have like two or three days to rest and then we go right into the next one. And yeah, for me, it has been like four months since I haven't really stopped um, working from eight to 10. And somehow it's 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 a bit tiring because I mean, when we finish the classes, it's not that I'm, I'm, I'm saying anything bad over here, okay? But when we finish the classes, you guys can easily just go to bed and forget about everything. But in our case, well, we have to stay around still to, um, to process the videos and to upload the videos to YouTube. So sometimes our night ends up around, well, basically, at midnight or even past midnight but still it's it's a really fun and cool experience i have been enjoying it a lot and hopefully well i am also helping you guys to learn something new okay so here we go we would rather and would prefer um as i mentioned it's not a huge difference the difference is very very tiny but it is crucial that we know this difference with would you rather, well, or would you rather, sorry, would rather takes the best, uh, the base form of the verb, which means that you're not going to be using anything else but rather and then the verb. With would prefer, it usually takes an infinitive. Remember, when we talk about infinitives, it's very simple. All we do is we just add the particle to before the verb so the verb is going to be written in this in this base form because the particle to is going to eliminate the need of creating any sort of change on the verb um, so that's what the difference is prefer is going to be accompanied by an infinitive which means we're going to use the particle to and rather doesn't need any kind of companion rather goes on well by itself and it's just uh, rather and the verb you're going to need. Now, here I have one example. Oh, wait, sorry. Before we, uh, we forget, both are followed by not in the negative form. So there is not, no need for other, um, for the other auxiliary verbs, like in the case of, the, of a present um, simple sentence that you need to use the do and the not form to write the negative. Here it's one of the only uh, times in which you're going to be seeing not being used on itself. And uh, well, the way it will look is like this. I would rather not, and just like that, I would rather not watch a movie um, than soccer. Okay, so that doesn't sound too well because the question, I mean, it's, the example is not uh, actually a negative example. It's a positive example. But here you're going to notice the tiny difference. When you use rather, then you just go as following. I would rather watch a movie than soccer. All right, so you're expressing your preference. And these two are used basically for that, to express the preference you have 
uh, of one thing over the other. So in the second case, when you use prefer, you use I will prefer to watch a movie than soccer. And the difference in the pronunciation is also um, not too deep, but there is a difference in the pronunciation. Rather and prefer. Um, this one, I think it's a little bit more elegant. Um, so in, in the case that you guys are in a meeting or in, um, in a dance or something like that, I will advise to use prefer because it sounds a little bit more elegant. However, both of them can be used for the same purpose. Both are going to be used for you to explain something you have well, somehow um, as a favorite over other thing that can be offered or can be part of the plan or part of the things you, you will be able to do. All right, so here, let's create some sentences from you, some things that you like and that you will rather do instead of another thing. Um, for the case of Emma, okay, so let's mention Emma, something you will rather do and something you will leave aside uh, and not do. Pero que no sea irse a dormir en lugar de estar en clase, okay? <laughs> and I would rather eat a pizza than a hamburger. Okay, very good. I would rather eat pizza than a hamburger. That's a statement I will actually follow up as well uh, from Joel let's take one with rather as well so what would you rather do instead of what would you not rather do okay I would rather uh, listen to rock than reggaeton okay listen to rock then I don't even know how to spell reggaeton <laughs> I think it's something like this if I guess I'm not sure yeah, if it doesn't pop, reggae, I know how to spell reggae because I listen to reggae sometimes, but there you go, reggaeton. We have a mistake. Okay, so how do you spell reggaeton? The computer knows. Yeah, the computer knows, but my computer doesn't work because my mouse isn't around. El, el pad ya lo tengo malo, así que ya no me va a agarrar. Bueno, para la next lo dejamos. Okay, Beatriz, uh, what would you rather do instead of the thing you will not like to do? I would rather go to the beach than go to the lake. Okay, very good. I would rather, um, ah, dang it. Y ahora ya se puso. Okay, one sec. There we go. I would rather go to the beach than go to the lake. Okay, then go to the lake. Amazing. I will share that idea as well because, yeah, going to the beach is a little bit more interesting than going to a lake. In the case of Melissa, what would you rather do instead of something you will not like to do that much? Um, I would rather uh, walk the mountain mm -hmm. than a volcano. Like in a mountain? Okay. Then mountain, then in a volcano. Sería on the hecho, on a volcano. Okay, so um, here I switched up a little bit the 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 verb you were you were using, because I don't know if you have ever uh, heard the difference, but there is a, a tiny difference as well when we're talking about walking and hiking. When we are walking. It means that we're um, doing this exercise on a flat surface. So something that isn't really challenging. Um, let's say you go to the park, you are normally just walking on, on the streets of your city. So that's something relatively easy, like anyone can do it. Now, hiking is something a bit more uh, extreme. Like if you go for a mountain hike, that's something a little bit more difficult. And it also represents that you're going into the wild. So it's better to use the verb hike when we talk about this situation than the verb walk. Because walk, it means that you're going on something that is easy, on something that um, has been paid 
o sea, cuando hablamos de walk, estamos refiriendo en verdad al simple hecho de caminar y, o sea, no es necesariamente algo que sea tan complicado. Y no necesariamente se usa por la complicación, sino por el sentido completo. O sea, caminar, por lo general, se usa eh, refiriéndonos a algo que, o sea, sería sobre una superficie plana. Puede ser, por ejemplo, en el parque, en la calle de una ciudad. Y el término hike o el verbo hike puede ser preferible para poder, ¿verdad?, explicar eh, cosas que tienen que ver un poco más como con la naturaleza o con algo un poco más extremo, no necesariamente una situación que sea tan fácil o tan sencilla de, de lograr. Así que, um, o sea, para tener eh, incluso más, más eh, extendido el vocabulario, ¿verdad?, hike en lugar de walk, cuando hablamos de cosas que pueden tener que ver con un poco ya de ejercicio. Teacher, y... I can use climb. With climbing? Uh -huh. Climb sería todavía más extremo. Pero sí, climb sería en el caso como por ejemplo el volcán de Izalco. I don't know if you guys have ever gone there. Pero eso sería un climb. Porque mm, okay. es más complicado. Vamos utilizando las manos incluso. Entonces, hike sería en un... Por ponerlo como ejemplo, ya hablando en términos un poco matemáticos, walk podría ser utilizado hasta cosas que tengan una inclinación tal vez de unos 30 grados, más o menos. El, o 30 sería bastante, digamos 25 o 20 grados, sí, más o menos hasta ese tipo de inclinación podemos utilizar eh, el walk. O sea que puede que sea un tanto, ajá, no tan parejo todos donde caminemos, pero eso sería walk. De unos 25 a 40 grados sería hike, sí, o sea, nosotros vamos todavía, o sea, caminando, eh, pero con mayor dificultad, ¿verdad? Es un terreno un poco más inclinado, pero siempre que vamos a lugares en donde sí es necesario que utilicemos las manos, que tengamos que, o sea, eh, de alguna que otra vez tomarnos de algún, de algún árbol, de alguna roca para poder subir al otro lugar, eso ya va a, a ser entendido como un climb. Entonces el climb es más para montañas, para terrenos mucho más inclinados y el, um, el hike es para cosas inclinadas, complicadas, pero no tan extremo, ¿verdad? Climb sería como ya lo, lo más alto o lo más extremo, porque incluso, o sea, a veces eh, se ve que hay personas que hacen rock climbing, no sé si alguna vez ustedes han visto ese tipo de, um, de actividades, pero, o sea, incluso van sobre rocas que, o sea, ellos quedan pendientes de, de la roca. Entonces, y eso todavía se conoce como climbing. Entonces, um, ajá, climbing es, es mucho más extremo y mucho más complicado que, que hiking. Ok, pero sí, se pueden utilizar. Sería walk, uh, hike, and climb. Los verbos que podemos usar para referirnos, ¿verdad? A ese tipo de actividades. Thank you, teacher. You're very welcome. Ok, uh, how about Daniel? Daniel, something you would rather do instead of something you wouldn't really like to do. Ok, in my case, teacher, I would rather study English online than presencial. Okay, I would rather study English online than on face-to-face -face classes. Okay. Esa sería la forma en la que lo, lo, lo decimos de hoy en día. Face-to-face -face classes. Al principio, ¿saben que cuando empezó toda esa situación de la pandemia? Eh, mis estudiantes de la universidad me preguntaban, ¿verdad? Mire, teacher, ¿cómo se dice presencial? O sea, porque pues sí, ¿verdad? Por lo general, eh, no necesitábamos hablar acerca de ese tipo de cosas. O sea, las clases en línea eran las que eran como cosa extraña. En ese momento no había una definición directa para hablar acerca de las clases presenciales. Mucho, por, por mucho tiempo en la universidad pasamos llamando las clases presenciales regular classes. Um, luego cambiamos a, a in-room classes y al final ya quedamos con el face-to-face -face classes. Pero eh, no necesariamente, ¿verdad? Hay una definición directa para hablar acerca de las clases presenciales. O sea, no es como que vamos a decir presencial ni nada de eso. O otra de las que por un momento se usó era live classes. Pero el detalle es que eso sí a sonar como si las, las clases en línea no eran, ¿verdad? En vivo. Entonces, por eso tampoco se utilizó, o, se, o por eso dejamos de utilizar el término de las live classes. 
Pero bueno, face to face clases sería la forma de referirnos a las clases eh, presenciales. Muy bien. So, the same, the same uh, structures we have used over here. We can easily just take them. For example, I'm going to take this example and move it down to prefer. However, remember the difference that is going to exist between the two is that we need to use this particle before the verb. So I would prefer to study English online than on face-to-face -face classes. Very good. So those are some of the examples. Here we have others. And here is also with the question. The question in this case will be, will you rather take a media class or a health class? Um, talking about media classes, Remember is uh, when we talk about something that has to do with TV, with radio, with newspaper, anything that has to do with journalism is going to be referred to as a media class. Um, even things that have to do with movies, however, those have a specific name that we have even down below. Um, but yeah, here we have this example. Now, important thing to remember, when we are um, writing sentences or interrogative sentences, we will need to use would at the beginning of, um, of the sentence. The same as in the, in the regular or um, positive sentences, when we mention I would rather, but here, because it's a question, we're going to be using it before the subject. Now, um, of course, it's important to remember that we can also write sentences or interrogative sentences about third people, about others, not necessarily um, only between us. Here, I could uh, ask, um, let's see, would Joel rather take a media class or a health class? What do you think will be the answer to this? Um, Emma, what do you think will be his preference? Will Joel rather take a media class or a health class? And the answer, right? Mm -hmm. Who else rather takes it? Takes, right? Mm -hmm. Take or, or yeah, no. take, 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 sorry. Takes a media class. Okay. Who else rather take? Oh, sorry. Who else rather take a media class? Muy bien. Yes, Esto lo hago. And that's true, right? Okay, very good, very good. So I'm doing this just to place the example that we can ask about third people. We don't necessarily uh, always are going to be asking just between you and me. So there is always the possibility for us to, um, to get to know what will be the preference of another person that is not necessarily being part of the conversation here at the moment. Now, Um, this is very simple, of course. What we do is that we offer two um, things that might maybe like in the same category. And it's really crucial that we remember that the verb, because we're using this word that is kind of weird, actually, rather and prefer, but rather mostly is kind of weird, weird because we don't need to change the verb anytime. For example, if you notice here, I'm not adding a nest after uh, after the verb, even though I am talking or about a third person. So when you use rather, you're not going to be having to do this change. Entonces el cambio, los cambios de los verbos que conocemos por lo general, verdad, en tiempos eh, del presente simple, que agregamos la s después de los verbos cuando los utilizamos con una tercera persona, no aplican cuando estamos utilizando eh, rather. Con prefer no se explica eso necesariamente porque sabemos que con prefer pues tenemos la partícula to que es el, el infinitivo y eso directamente verdad ya nos indica que no es necesario hacer que, básicamente ningún cambio en el verbo principal. Entonces el verbo siempre se va a quedar de esa forma. Así que, um, pero con rather eh, es la única cosa que tenemos que recordar, que no hay necesidad de generar cambios en el verbo aunque se esté hablando acerca de una tercera persona. Okay, so the thing also is always remember that when you're using rather, it's um, something that you want to get the people to pick. And well, you're not going to offer things that are 
too far apart from one another. Like if I ask you, will Hoyer rather have a, we're gonna go wild. I don't know if you like this at all, Hoyle, but I'm gonna take you as an example, or um, we're gonna do this, or a scion. So what would Hoyle rather, what do you think, um, Daniel, will Hoyle rather have a Maserati or a scion? Oh, it was a simple sentence. So what do you think, Daniel? Repeat the question, teacher. Will Joel mm -hmm. rather have a Maserati or a Scion? I, I think uh, Joel rather have a Scion. A Scion? What would you rather, Joel? Would you rather have a Scion or a Maserati? Maserati, maybe. Yo me diría por el Maserati. I don't know, Joel. What would you rather have? <laughs> A Lambo. <risas> sí, ok, pero el punto es, lo que les quería mencionar con esto, o sea, al poner este ejemplo, es que tampoco vamos a mencionar, ¿verdad?, cosas que estén tan, eh, que sean tan diferentes una de la otra. O sea, por lo general tratamos de ofrecer cosas que estén como en la misma liga, por decir así. Entonces aquí podríamos cambiar el Maserati por un Civic, ¿sí? Un Civic y un Zion más o menos van siendo, eh, o van siendo pues parte como de lo mismo, ¿verdad? No vamos a decir, por ejemplo, um, would you rather, vamos a ver, vamos a poner lo que, lo que, les, lo que les puede gustar a ustedes. Would you rather support, um, no, este otro. Ok, would you rather support Alianza or, um, what you call it, uh, vamos a ponerles este. Okay, so would, um, aquí vamos a cambiar el nombre, uh, Melissa. So what do you think, Beatriz? Would Melissa rather support Alianza or Real Madrid? Uh, Melissa rather uh, support uh, Real Madrid. Okay, because you know, normally it's a larger team, it's more widely known, and it's not necessarily on the same spectrum as Alianza. What would be the truth of that, Melissa? What would you rather support, or what team would you rather support? And um, about football? Uh, yeah. Uh, mm, I don't like. <laughs> like but soccer, if I, <laughs> uh -huh. I like basketball. Oh, really? But if I knew to shoot, mm -hmm. maybe Real Madrid, okay. but I don't know. <laughs> okay, so if you like basket, we're going to change it then to basket. Um, we're going to go with, a ver, Warriors or, um, let's see, we're going to take one that I know, and it's... <laughs> Boston. No, vamos a poner estos que o sea, sería, sería uno de aquí, sí. Ese es un equipo de acá cerca de San Rafael. Se llama Jaycomers porque son jicameros los que juegan. So, would Melissa rather support Warriors or Jaycomers? What would you rather support, Melissa? I, I would rather support a Warriors. Warriors, right. And what is your favorite team? Warriors. Oh, really? <laughs> In Boston, too. <laughs> I, hit it on the, I hit the nail on the head. No sé por qué la pensé y dije, para que los Warriors sean. Es que los yeah. Warriors sé que han tenido buenas temporadas últimamente. Por un momento pensé yeah. en Miami Heat, pero después fue como que, nah. <laughs> no creo. Solo yo soy el que sigo a LeBron, dije yo. <laughs> okay, so very good, very good. So here we have it. If we have these options like this, it's not going to be easy for people to, I mean, it's going to be relatively easy because of course um, they're going to go for the higher one or the more appreciated one first, instead of picking the one that is from a lower um, setting or from a, a, a lower league, we can, we can call it that. Now here, if I will be fair, I will place, for example, would she rather uh, support Warriors or, well, 
Este de hecho se llama completo Miami Heat. So what would be the, the favorite one? And that is something more even. So in this case, we are placing examples of things that are like on the same league. So that's very important to remember as well. When you are using um, the, the rather or, or preferred questions, try to always mention things that are similar to one another. So in that way, you're going to have a fair game. Um, now, that doesn't mean that it's an obligation to always put two things that are similar on, on the table, because, for example, um, we can ask something like this. Um, okay, one sec. A cake or... Okay, so what do you think will be the answer to this? Joel, will Emma rather get a cake or flowers for her birthday? Um, Emma would rather would rather get a flowers for her get flowers? birthday. I guess not. Sure. Okay, very good. So these two, they are not, as I mentioned, in the same league but they are similar in the means that they are possible gifts for a person. I'm not going to say for a girl because, I mean, men can also, uh, men, sorry, can also get flowers, okay? But, um, so yeah, it's like, a, it's kind of similar because they are both possible gifts for a special occasion. And what would be the answer to this, Emma? Would you rather get a cake or flowers for your birthday? I'd rather take a cake. Okay, I, I would imagine so. I don't know why I would imagine so. Very good. So um, those then will be the ways in which we can use um, the rather uh, examples or the rather options. Remember, the only difference here with prefer is going to be um, the fact that you need to use this in the middle. Yes, so you need to use two in the middle between prefer and um, the main verb of the sentence or the main verb of the question. Would you prefer to study film studies or broadcasting? Now, Daniel, dígame, what's the meaning of broadcasting? ¿Qué entiende usted por broadcasting? Broadcasting. Would you prefer to study film studies? Ah, como este, este broadcasting. Ah, no, 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 no tengo la palabra. En su teléfono, este... su teléfono nunca lo ha visto en, en YouTube. En su, en, en, es una de las opciones que aparece en YouTube. En la aplicación, claro, de YouTube. No, pues es que no me acuerdo, profe. Broadcasting. Yes. Anyone in the class know the meaning Tell of me, broadcasting? It's like I a search. Sorry, Joel. Okay, um, Melissa. I search on Google Translated and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Eso es hacer trampa, pero ajá. <laughs> Uh, radio difusión, but I don't know if it's okay. correct. It was too far. I mean, it is one definition, but that's too big or I mean, too large of a definition. Um, teacher, I'm having an... Oh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that. So, I, I kind of heard that you mentioned transmitir, Joel. I'm not sure. Pero ese sería el significado principal para la palabra broadcasting. Sí, o sea, el radiotransmisión, claro, es uno de los que se engloba, ¿verdad? En todo lo que tiene que ver con la transmisión. Pero eh, directamente decir transmitir es, ¿verdad? El significado principal que vamos a tener para esta palabra. El film studies, pues, se ref... siempre que hablamos acerca de film, se va a referir acerca de la, a, a las películas. Entonces, estudio de películas o transmisión. ¿Cuál sería lo que preferirías estudiar? Claro, esto siguiendo con el mismo eh, ejemplo anterior, ¿verdad? En el cual se proponía si la persona quería estudiar 
um, health or media class. So as we pick media, then we come to film studies or broadcasting. Entonces, broadcasting, vamos a entenderlo como transmisión, ¿sí? And if you are broadcasting something, then that means que ustedes están transmitiendo, ¿verdad? Eh, alguna clase de detalle específico. Pero bueno, esto sería lo que vamos a aprender acerca de rather and prefer. No sé si tenemos alguna duda acerca de eh, las dos palabritas principales de hoy. Teacher, ¿Sí? a mí no me quedó muy claro qué significaba rather. Ah, rather es el, lo mismo eh, que prefer. O sea, rather se entiende como preferir también. Sí, prefiero. Would rather. Mm, okay. Uh -huh. Entonces, o sea, básicamente significan lo mismo, solo que prefer, claro, ¿verdad? Es mucho más cercana al significado que tenemos en español. Entonces, por eso quizás se nos hace mucho más fácil de, de poder entenderla. Pero rather and prefer, they have the same meaning and they are used basically for the same thing, to express preference over something. Ok. Um, bueno, recordamos, mañana tenemos la última clase de la semana. Después de la clase de mañana vamos a el break, ¿verdad? De Semana Santa. Así que sería básicamente la última clase antes de esa semana de descanso. Así que espero tenerlos acá. Espero que podamos seguir compartiendo. Para mañana tenemos una conversación que ya está pendiente. Um, y pues, muchas gracias for your attention and participation this evening. Thank you guys very much. I hope you get to enjoy your night. And if it's raining where you guys live, well, enjoy it because it's going to be kind of cool. Okay, so thank you guys very much and see you tomorrow. Bye, teacher. Okay, bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, see you. Bye.